Hi guys, welcome to another episode of The Aspiring Entrepreneur. Welcome to today's daily recap. It's March 16th, it is Tuesday, and the markets felt extremely heavy today, although they were making all-time highs, slightly down on the S&P, and of course, um, as always guys, there's always the unknowns in trading, and I hope you guys hung in there. I had one of the, not such a great day, and I will talk about my trades today, and how I did, and what exactly, where exactly I messed up on. Um, just starting off with our daily recap, we go over stocks that we cover in our Sunday channel. So today that would be Apple, Tesla, Clover, uh, Palantir, and I got a few others that I did trade that I will go through. And just starting off with Apple, surprisingly, Apple was one of those stocks that was up today. And so you can see we have our, our heavy resistance here at 127.50. We didn't quite get there, but we were up today and we managed to stay up. And really it had to do with this article. So Foxconn, which is one of the biggest Apple's supplier, had mentioned that they were looking to do um, the, one of their plants in, I believe it was Wisconsin, right? That if they could decide that they could actually build some of these uh, EVs. And so, you know, it's just interesting that there's that rumor is Foxconn to be the potentially the, the people that can make it. Um, and it's, you know, it'd be locally made in, in, in the United States, which is always good for, for Americans. And so, you know, it'd be interesting to see kind of how this article develops and where Apple typically does with the car. So that was really the news that drove the stock today. And then of course we had that sell off and then we sort of rebounded, but we still were trading higher today and, and that's good for the stock. And you know, you can see we're up about a buck, about a buck 50. And so again, you know, testing that 127.50, we saw a bounce right off of this level. And same thing tomorrow, guys, I can see potentially a fade off the 125. And then if we can bounce off and validate, definitely get back up here and, and test this resistance to 127.50, okay? And so you can see today, we clearly wanted to trade above that. So I just wanna see a validation on that level of 125 and let us get back up into the 127s. And so, you know, good day for Apple traders. Uh, I personally didn't trade Apple. Uh, Tesla, same thing as well. You know, we've had this really strong support at 695 that we've been bouncing off of both as resistance and support. And today, guys, you can just see that the market just completely fell. I mean, look at these candles, okay? So this is a 15-minute chart. And so you can see these wicks. We kept bouncing off of that channel, but we just couldn't get over this sort of 710 resistance that we've identified. And keep in mind, guys, this is the level that we had pre before Tesla broke down, okay? So we've mentioned that this was going to be a, a decent resistance level. And we just completely just broke down. So we essentially traded from, you know, 698 all the way down here to 670, okay? And so it was a massive drop, and then we slightly rebounded. So... You know, heading into tomorrow, I expect that yeah, we'll probably hit 695 again as a resistance because technically it has been broken now, okay? And so we can definitely need to trade a little bit lower and we could bounce off the 660 and trade between 695. And again, if we can break above it and hold it, then it's validated as a support. But I was pretty disappointed and surprised to see that it broke. And again, guys, we've made a pretty good bounce from the lows a few days ago. And so today it was just kind of pushing that. Uh, limit and I still see this thing coming back up. I just think that you know it's just going to be sort of slow moving, and so we'll give it some time to consolidate. It's held the 660 to 695 levels pretty well, and so hopefully we'll get our leg up and start trading at least to the 50, and then of course back up. Okay, so just give it some time, and stimulus checks are coming out, and so just hang in there. Uh, Palantir, you know, same thing. I think the CEO I believe was on uh cnbc today and same thing i mentioned you know that we have the 2750 level it's a strong resistance had that yesterday and today was no different we didn't even get up there so we haven't even tested it i expect us to test it a few times before we can break it and you know guys i've been saying this all along is this is a stock that it has shifted now to positive momentum but this is a stock that's just been beaten down okay and so the 50 day here around 28 you know we're still trading below it it's still bearish but there's so much you know the buyers are here okay and so all along when we were going back and forth before demo day the buyers just stepped in on this big volume day okay and we haven't really had that uh since you know since we had this sort of leg up on the upper bollinger band we've been just trading back in this channel in, in the 20s to the mid to the high 20s okay and to the low 20s excuse me and so what i expect too is now that we're in this channel this channel's form similar to, to what we had here that we'll get back on this upper upper leg once we trade over the 50 day and so we just got to wait and let this consolidate some more and then like i said i expect to see us break out okay and so again you can see the momentum is there and you can see that the stock you know has basically been trading in a tighter range but we've held these pretty you know these levels 25 pretty well and overall the market just looked weak today okay so again i expect tomorrow we, we we've solidified and held 2550 
And then tomorrow I'd like to see at least a, a few bounces resistance off the 2750 before we could break it off. And I mentioned yesterday that I expected it to hit and then potentially fade off before it broke. We didn't even test it. So I still like to say that we're, we're potentially not going to break it for, for, you know, a few more days. Um, Clover, you know, it's been a, a great stock. I, I, you could see, I have an alert here that orange line is represented. I wanted to see if we could get up here to the 925. Clearly the top here has been nine, about 910. And we haven't been able to break it. And same thing, just like Tesla, overall market weakness, we sold off later in the day. And of course, we bounced right back up. So again, we've held a pretty good level and we've consolidated really well. Um, but just overall market weakness, guys. So again, I still see that we can gap up tomorrow and hopefully retrace some of the losses that we had today and get back up here and at least start testing 925. And still, my game plan is the same. I'm still planning on trading right up here, closer to the 50-day, um, which is going to be getting into 1050. Okay, and so just keep in mind guys the key levels here, you know, we, we've had a lot of bounce off this 1050 and that's why I'm looking for that trade. This is where we broke down, which was the 925 level. So I definitely expected us to get there by now uh, and we haven't. And so we'll just give it another you know day. And I think by this week, we'll definitely be testing 925, no doubt. Uh, one of the socks I was really disappointed on how I traded. Um, I'm a, a, a scalper. I had a great trade here in the morning on this morning flush. So as we talked about yesterday, Virgin was a great buy at $34, okay? And so when I bought it, you could see a perfect bounce off this 34. And and you could see that the bounce off the 34 had essentially came up with this wick and then it, it came up briefly. And you know, being a day trader, sometimes you're not fast enough. You know, you get these 30, 40 cent moves that you're looking for as part of your plan. And then, so you can see here on my minute chart, okay? So you had a quick flush 34. And then you bounce as high as 3470 guys. And so think about it. This is like a 70 cent move. And then it just flushes right back down. So if you didn't get out here, you're right back where you started. And so it was, I was in between some other trades and I ended up missing my, my, my exit. And I ended up just sort of back holding space, which again, I don't mind because I mentioned to you guys that my play here is between the 50 and the 20 days around 38, 39 as an exit. And so I don't mind that I have to back hold, especially considering we're really still close to the anchored VWAP in the 200 day. But it was just unfortunate because, you know, I like to get in and out of the trades, especially with overall market weakness that we saw later today. And just to have to back hold it, I wasn't that thrilled. And obviously, you know, there was better levels to buy. And so we're trading, you know, back again when we recovered in the stock last week. You can see, right, we traded as low as $30. Or actually, it was, excuse me, it was even lower. It was right down here. As long as low as 24 and so we just gave some of that back and we had a bounce right here, you know, a few days ago at 32. And so there was definitely better buys, but you know, again, overall market weakness trading under that fast moving SMA line. And so tomorrow, same thing. I expect that we can at least get back up here to the 35 and, and retrace some of those losses that we had today. So, you know, it's a, it's a stress-free trade. It's just one of those trades that you have to swing. And I, like I mentioned before, I'm a really short swing term trader, so I don't like to, you know, swing more than a few days. So that's my play though, is just really trying to get back up here. Kind of a tease here yesterday, didn't quite get there and definitely didn't get there today. Okay, so again, between the 20 day and the 50 day, it's between 37 and 39. And so I'll be trading somewhere in there. Okay, just depending on how the market's doing overall. And then FSL, uh, I wanna mention sort of a couple extra stocks, just disappointing earnings. It was, the loss was a lot greater than, than what was the estimate. And so of course the stock's gonna sell off and guys keep in mind this is a stock that was trading right over here close to you know 30 um the high over here was 30 essentially 30 dollars and it's just completely sold off and so i know i say this a lot but if you're a long-term trader this is the part that i struggle with being a long-term trader is that you know you're buying stuff back here and let's say you're worried about short-term capital gains and so you don't sell here and then you end up let's just say maybe selling here potentially for a loss or a break even and so it's like that's the hard part I think I have with short long-term trading is that you just give up a lot of these moves that are, you know, potentially even doubling your account. And so with, with FSL disappointing earnings, you know, you could see that it, it sold off. And so I was short bias in the morning and it clearly tried to recover a lot of the, that loss and it, it just, it couldn't really hold. So it, I, I faded it as well. I think I had a couple trades just for scout plays. I wasn't trying to go too, too crazy with the market. Now today, what I really want to talk about is this SSY completely blew me out of the waters. I did not have a proper risk management plan. And, you know, it's just a lesson. Like I, I go through in the morning, a couple hours before, you know, I look at all the stocks, I look at which one's gapped up 
And so this is a stock that is, you know, buck 80, two bucks that was going up to, you know, 450, five bucks. So, you know, it gets your attention. It's on the list. And I was looking at it and it, it had already faded off. And one of the things that I I started doing was short pre-market. And I always mentioned to you guys that, you know, if you, you should always cover in pre-market. And so I was up and I didn't really pay too much attention to it. But one of the things that I shouldn't have done is I went full size going into the market and I didn't cover. And you can see quickly with just looking at the volume. And another thing was there was a, another stock CAF that was already gapping up and it was already gapping up and it had high volume and it ended up just failing at market open. This one did the exact opposite. This one barely had, I mean, it had 5 million shares going into open, but that's not a lot, right? Five to 6 million is not a lot considering like CAF, for example, had like, you know, I think it was like 30, 40 million. So I'm like, okay, this stock isn't that like that traded it's probably just gonna be short heavy and i can risk you know up here and what happened was you can see how fast this is a 15 minute chart guys we go from a low of 340 to 540 this is a two dollar jump and instead of having a proper plan and you know having a stop maybe around you know 375 and definitely no more than four bucks i ended up getting stuck in this trade and then it gets halted okay and so once it got halted and it continued up, i ended up taking a loss up here uh, somewhere in like the, the six, I think it was like the sixes actually. And then it ended up going all the way up to sevens and the high sevens. And then of course it failed and faded. And some of you guys would say, well, why wouldn't you just stay in the trade? You know, it's down at $4 and you could have, guys, this is halted and this is going up and you can see ENTX and a lot of stocks, they go up, up, up. They halt multiple times. You don't know if this thing's going to come back down. Are you willing to risk your account and, and you know, whatever you worked so hard for just to, just so you could be right. I mean, clearly I was wrong should have covered should have had a clear stop and i just got caught and the reason why i wanted to share this and you guys might be even aware of this website because it's very popular it's very you know a lot of people use it finviz right f-i-n-v-i-z so a lot of people use it and so i was like wondering like how did a stock go from 5 million volume within the first minute there was literally 50 million shares traded 50 million shares and that is like i've never had like i've never gone through that before and so i looked and i'm like this was the number guys that I should have paid attention to. Okay. Is that this is a micro float stock, meaning that there's only four and a half million shares out there to trade. And so if you have, let's just say, you know, 50 million shares trading in the first couple minutes, it's already rotated hands 12 times, right? So that's a lot of shares to go through and that's how you get a price to jump up like that. Okay. And so you get this type of price jump that quick, that fast, because there's not a whole lot of shares out there. So it's rotating so quick and I completely did not do my research. And that's why I wanted to share that with you guys, an expensive lesson, but of course, you know, not worried about it. It's just, you know, just a red day. You can't always have a, a green day is that pay attention to the shares flow, go to Finviz and understand that this is all you need to change hands, right? So as the flow is changing hands, then those buyers are, are, are pushing up the stock and selling and selling. And it rotated so fast in this candle here that, I mean, look at the volume, guys. And it traded a total of 200 million shares. So if you take 200 and you divide it by four, guys, it rotated hands 50 times. It's just incredible. And so it was just, it was poor, poor risk management, poor planning. Could have easily saw this, realized that, hey, it's easy to be manipulated. And of course, what? Wait for this, this candle, right? Wait for that engulfing candle to get involved, okay? And so, you know, just wanted to share that with you guys. Hopefully you could take something away from that. If you did, definitely please add a comment. Maybe add a comment on something that you can share if you have a similar story. Uh, but yeah, it started off as a rough day. It wasn't, wasn't the best trading day for myself. And uh, just, you know, part of learning and acknowledging kind of my mistake. And of course, you know, just not obeying my risk management plan. And of course, also going full size, heading into open on a stock that just blew up. I mean, look at the volume pre-market. And then look at the first bar, guys. That's what blows up a stock from, you know, 330. It was like 330 here all the way up to, to $7, okay? So with that said, guys, that's the daily recap for today. Again, please do hit that like button if you did enjoy this video. And I hope you guys had a wonderful day. And I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.